let us pray. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth. So, by the sanctification of grace, we may bear the image of the man of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man, so shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Speak to God.
take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and 
supplications, with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard, Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper 
Jesus said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold, and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, I have spoken, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, you are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning. And they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If you were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing, you, bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. 
The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now since it was preparation day, 
in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we hear, as we do each year, the terrible suffering of Jesus, we can feel a lot of different emotions. Perhaps we're outraged because of the complete miscarriage of justice. Perhaps we're horrified because of the excessive cruelty Jesus experienced. Maybe we feel relief that Jesus dies relatively quickly. Perhaps we're filled with sorrow that we have lost our Savior to death. Ultimately, it leads us to look at suffering and death. Does it have value? Is it worthwhile? Or is it just something we all must do? Jesus, having returned from death, gives death and suffering meaning. He is the only one who passed through death and lived a new resurrected life that can reveal to us what it is really like. No movie, no book, no one else is qualified to do this. Only Jesus. What is the meaning of suffering and death? It's worthwhile. For Jesus, he makes it into our forgiveness of sins, our redemption, our salvation. We are invited today not just to thank the Lord for saving us, but to say to him in the cross we venerate that we too want our sufferings and our death to have meaning. We do this by honoring the cross, the instrument of salvation. As you come forward to venerate the cross, let it not just be with sorrow for the suffering of, and death of Jesus. Let it be our acceptance of the cross by touching it, kissing it, embracing it. As we venerate the cross, may it give meaning to our lives often filled with suffering and death um, that awaits us all as Jesus uses it to bring forgiveness, redemption, and salvation. 
cuando escuchamos como cada año el terrible sufrimiento de Jesús, sentimos muchas cosas diferentes. Indignación por el completo error judicial. En aras de la conveniencia política. Horror ante la excesiva crueldad mostrada a Jesús. Alivio de que Jesús muera relativamente rápido a medida que avanzan las crucifixiones. Lamento que hemos perdido a nuestro Salvador a la muerte. En última instancia, conduce a una mirada sobre el sufrimiento y la muerte. ¿Tiene valor? ¿Vale la pena o es algo que todos debemos hacer? Jesús, al haber regresado de la muerte, le da sentido. Él es el único que pasó por la muerte y vivió una nueva vida, resucitada, que nos puede revelar cómo es realmente. Ninguna película, ningún libro, nadie más está calificado para hacer esto solo Jesús. ¿Cuál es el significado y sufri del sufrimiento y la muerte? ¿Vale la pena? ¿Para Jesús lo convierte en nuestro perdón de los pecados, nuestra redención y nuestra salvación? Estamos invitados hoy no solo a agradecer al Señor por salvarnos, pero decirle en la cruz que veneramos que también nosotros queremos que nuestros sufrimientos y nuestra muerte tengan sentido. Hacemos esta honrando la cruz, el instrumento de salvación. Al pasar al frente para venerar la cruz, que no se, sea solo con dolor y acción de gracias por el sufrimiento y muerte de Jesús. Que sea nuestra aceptación de la cruz, tocándola, besándola, abrazándola. Al venerar la cruz, que dé sentido a nuestra vida, a menudo lleno de sufrimiento y la muerte que nos espera la toro, a todos como Jesús lo usa para traer perdón, redención y salvación. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oremos también por nuestro Santo Padre, el Papa Francisco, para que Dios, nuestro Señor, que lo eligió entre los obispos, lo asista y proteja para bien de su iglesia como guía uh, y pastor uh, del pueblo santo de Dios. Rodiémonos. Levantémonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, cuya providencia gobierna todas las cosas, atiende a nuestras súplicas y protege con tu amor al Papa que nos has elegido para que el pueblo cristiano, confiado por ti a su guía pastoral, progrese siempre en la fe. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Let us pray also for our Bishop Peter, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Oremos también por uh, los nuestros catecúmenos para que Dios nuestro Señor los ilumine in, interiormente y les comunique su amor y para que mediante el bautismo se les perdonen todos sus pecados y queden incorporados a Cristo nuestro Señor. Aro Diémonos. Levantémonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que sin cesar con seres nuevos hijos a tu iglesia, aumenta en Uh, nuestros catecúmenos el conocimiento de su fe para que puedan renacer por el bautismo a la vida nueva de tus hijos de adopción. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ that our Lord and God may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord.
Oremos también por el pueblo judío al que Dios se dignó hablar por medio de los profetas para que el Señor le conceda progresar continuamente en el amor a su nombre y en la fidelidad a su alianza. Arrodillémonos. Levantémonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que prometiste llenar de bendiciones a Abraham y a su descendencia, escucha las súplicas de tu iglesia y concede al pueblo de la primitiva alianza alcanzar la plenitud de la redención. Por Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oremos también por los que no conocen uh, uh, conocen a Dios para que obren siempre con bondad y rectitud y puedan llegar así a conocer a Dios. Arrodillémonos. Levantémonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que has hecho a los hombres en tal forma que en todo, aún sin saberlo, te busquen y solo al encontrarte uh, hayan, hayan descanso, considéranos que en medio de las adversidades de este mundo, todos reconozcan las señales de tu amor y estimulados por el testimonio de nuestra vida, tengan por fin la alegría de creer en ti, único Dios verdadero y Padre de todos los hombres, por Jesucristo nuestro Let us pray also for those in public office, that our Lord and God may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Oremos, hermanos, a Dios Padre Todopoderoso, 
para que libre al mundo de todo, todas sus miserias, de salud a los enfermos y pan a los que tienen hambre. Libre a los encarcelados y haga justicia a los oprimidos. Conceda seguridad a los que viajan un pronto retorno a los que se encuentran uh, lejos del hogar y la vida eterna a los moribundos. Arrodillémonos. Levantémonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, consuelo de los afligidos y fortaleza eh, que sufren, escucha a los que te invocan en su tribulación para que experimenten. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. hung the salvation of the world.
Once my most beautiful and chosen bride, and you scourged Egypt for your sake with her firstborn sons and you scourged me and handed me over my
struck down for you the kings of the Canaanites, and you struck my head with a reed. My Faithful. 
please stand. APA, por favor. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please depart in silence. Please remain quiet until you are all the way outside. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord.